Reading is just a habit you gotta form in all of life. Books don't change people's sentences. Reading good, solid, reform, spiritual literature, reading especially the classic, that's had the biggest impact on my life. Well, good day and welcome to another episode of the Reformers Bookcast. Uh, my name is Tom Eglinton. I'm the manager here at Reformers, and this year we're doing it again. We have the Equip ladies with us just before Equip to discuss the, the book list. Welcome, Isabel and Jocelyn. Thanks Hi, for Tom. having us. <laughs> Thanks for coming along. Um, now, Equip, we did t- talk about it a little bit last time, but what is what is Equip? What's it all about? Yes, so uh, Equip is an annual Bible teaching conference for women. Uh, It's run in Sydney, uh, but in these last few years of lockdown and pandemic, uh, it's a virtual conference. So we have women joining us from all around Australia and New Zealand and even a few international requests. That's good. So uh, people are finding the the online experience to to work for them? You know, as much as we kind of miss getting together in person, I feel like for lots of churches, it's so much easier to just gather their own women in their own church. And, you know, they've got the teaching program already prepared. And so they can just focus on how to help their women digest that, how they can encourage each other, have chats. So I feel like for lots of local churches, it seems like it's a bit of an easier women's day for them. And I guess the bonus is you get to be part of something that lots of churches and lots of women are doing at the same time yeah that's good i mean jocelyn was telling me that the the feedback you guys have had has been that people have been enjoying it oh and it's dirt cheap can i say (laughs) twenty dollars per person a lot cheaper than going into icc and having to get to the city and yeah yeah Yeah. you don't have all the travel costs and you know i think my church are going to order lunch in but some churches are doing byo so there's just so much flexibility and I think even, can I say, like, you know, we're in wedding catch-up season, let's face it, all the people who have postponed their celebrations plus, you know, people getting engaged. And so there's quite a number of churches that have already let us know that they'll be watching it the week after because they've got a big wedding on the 18th. So I guess that's a really nice bonus um, of doing it virtually as well. And when is it and how do people sign up? Uh, So Saturday, June 18 uh, is the premiere, uh, but you'll be able to re-watch it um, or watch it uh, right up until Wednesday, July 20. So registrations are actually open until the 20th of July. Uh, You can uh, join and watch it and stream it at any time from the 18th to the 20th. Very good. And that's equip.org.au. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I should say my website. (laughs) Kimberly's not going to be happy with me. (laughs) Equip.org.au. So that's that's excellent. And um, you've been you uh, you were just talking before, Isabel. You've been doing Equip for twenty four years. Have you been there since the beginning as well, Justin? No, I think Not I've quite. only been four years. So. Four years. <laughs> oh, well. It's been a busy four years. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you love about Equip? Why do you keep doing it? Oh, uh, it's a real privilege. Um, I mean, I love. I love reading the Bible with women, and so this is kind of like reading the Bible with women on steroids. <laughs> uh, I think one of the really nice things as a personal little thing for me is um, I get to do it with some people that I have done life with, and so it's kind of an added element of our Christian fellowship and friendship. But also, I mean, most of the time you don't have the luxury of spending a whole year just dwelling on five chapters of the Bible. Uh, but we get to do that every year and I always leave, I guess, you know, whatever book or chapter that we've done, just that little bit richer, just that little bit more, I guess, having had more time to think about it and let it sink in, it feels like it becomes more part of um, my framework, who I am. Mm. Mm. And what, what book are you looking at this year? We're looking at Lamentations, yeah, so... Not a book that a lot of people have done at women's conferences, is it? No, <laughs> no it's not your typical <laughs> conference book. Um, what, what was behind picking that? You picked it, Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we did, uh, we did Ruth last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, we're going to do Song of Songs next year. And then we'll follow that up with Ecclesiastes. So I guess we decided that we'd do a little series uh, in the Old Testament and... I guess we're particularly interested in helping women to see the big story of the Bible and how uh, 
different books fit into that. So I guess we've chosen a few shorter and lesser known Old Testament books uh, that women are generally unfamiliar with um, and have just used that as an opportunity to help women understand the big picture of God's story. That's great. Um, Now, I don't know if it's been every year, but an awful lot of years you've had a bookstall and you've you know, we've, we now do it online, an online bookstore, uh, and you select a, a list of books. Why do you encourage women to read books? Yeah, mm. on, <laughs> I think reading books is a really important part of the Christian life. Um, so obviously you want to read your Bible. You want to be meeting with other Christians uh, and praying and hearing the word talk. But I think reading Christian books is another way that we grow um, and I was even thinking the other day, it's kind of a little expression of being part of the universal church. Like so often we're in our local churches, just meeting with local Christians. But I can pick up a book written by a Christian on the other side of the world or hundreds of years ago and that person's going to be around the throne of God with me one day. Uh, so it's almost a little picture of getting to be part of that universal church by reading widely and reading what other Christians have thought about things. Yeah. That is that is so true. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the, yeah, I always think about it that way that, You've you've got such a limited pool of resource if you're only interacting with other Christians who are right in front of you. Yeah. Um, whereas we we have such a wealth these days with all the books, hundreds of years old, different parts of the world, different experiences, um, which is really a blessing that we should take take hold of. And yeah. I think since uh, Jocelyn's been with us on committee, we've kind of refined it to the top. 10. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to have a really big bookshop, uh, but I think we like doing the top 10, don't we? We take our time and make sure that, well, let's face it, Jocelyn takes a lot of time <laughs> and uh, make sure that each book is a good read and would be beneficial um, for the women who are tuning into Equip to have a think about. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and so let's have a look at the, the books that you've got this year. Um, I thought we could start with this new one. The World Next Door, A Short Guide to the Christian Faith. I haven't had a chance to read this yet, so you're going to have to tell me all about it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Well, this book, we kind of picked it because it's nice to have a book on there that you could give to a non-Christian. If you have someone who says to you, what is it you believe? Um, or if you have someone you want to share a book with, it's it's great to have something. Yeah. And I really like this <laughs> book. <a> yes. True <laughs> confession. I've only read half of it because halfway through – uh, my daughter took it to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing to do with a book like that. <laughs> but the, um, the, the first few chapters that I read were fascinating, right? Yeah. Because so it's, it's an interesting start. It is. So it's um, it's an apologetics book, but I'd say it's not apologetic. No. <laughs> so rather than uh, starting with the de- um, defending Christianity against mm-hmm. other things, it, it actually follows the Apostles' Creed. So it sets out uh, what it is we believe. Uh, and they don't shy away from... Um, tricky bits like the first chapter is about demons, <laughs> demons <exactly. laughs> so I feel like it's it's really robust and hearty and it's also a, just a great read like it's a really easy read it's engaging it's interesting um I can think of a dozen people that I'd love to read it mm. <laughs> um and I just think it's a really great defense of the Christian faith it'd be a good book for Christians to read too actually because I think if you've gone through the Apostles Creed and thought why is that in there why is that an important part um of what we believe it's a really great book to read if that's you as well. Yeah, and Rory Shona and Peter Orr um, are excellent communicators. Like, even though they're tackling some very uh, interesting kind of big words and concepts, like they do the Trinity and things like that, but it's actually quite easy to read and understand. They're excellent communicators, so well worth getting. Yeah, and Australian too. I think it's nice to have a yes. book that's written by Australians. It just speaks well to our context. I yeah. couldn't agree yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so. That's great to hear. Actually, it's made me very interested because I've been very impressed lately with the Apostles' Creed. Um, I've been reading "Be Thou My Vision." My kids have been reading it to me, and they go through the Apostles' Creed regularly. And um, it's yeah, it's a very it's quite a comprehensive look at the Christian faith. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so a, a great little exposition on it sounds like a. Worthwhile well, thing. and I think it's a really – so say if you've got someone who's, you know, not sure what they think about Christianity, but ha- especially if they have a little bit of Christian background mm. because I think it addresses some of the things that maybe are in the back of their head um, but they've never really understood what it what it's about. So it's especially good for them, I think, or someone who's quite new to Christianity. I think very mm. f- good explanation of some key ideas about Christianity and faith. Yeah, that's great. 
Uh, and I, I'm actually really glad to hear they don't hold back as well because I, I think that that is increasingly needed in our mm. culture. We need to be we need to embrace the fact that Christianity's got some interesting things about it, um, and that but they're true, mm. and, and they reflect reality. So that's yeah. that's really encouraging. Uh, now, you've s- selected quite a lot of books this year about suffering and grief, which I guess it goes with the theme of lamentations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> lament. <laughs> yeah. And I think you say quite a few times in the conference that lamentation is a book for sufferers and sinners. Yes. Um, and I think we really wanted to be able to address the problem of suffering and evil and, and how we think about that. And so we've got a few books on the list that kind of do that at different levels. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's two different ways to look at suffering. One sort of a theoretical or theological look at it. Why is there suffering? And another is how do you deal with suffering, that sort of personal approach. Can you talk to me about how you see those two approaches, um, what you found useful, maybe how some of the books fit into those different areas? I feel like we, um, Jocelyn uh, has chosen a really good range on suffering. So, I mean, we've got as our classic read, my go-to book, on suffering. Um, it's a hard read. Uh, it's uh, How Long, O Lord by Don Carson. Uh, but I think the amount of detail that he goes through, um, it's definitely worth persisting uh, because I think it gives you a really rich understanding. And he very clearly in the introduction says it's like a vaccine. So if you live long enough, you're going to suffer. Um, and so this book gives you a biblical framework and a perspective so that you can actually understand what's happening um, and how faith actually helps. Ah, so he's helping to think through it because you're going to encounter it at some point. I get you. Yeah, so yeah. I guess it's a book to read before, if, if that's possible. Um, would you say that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think he yeah. says that in the intro. It's yeah. an inoculation or a vaccine. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, because the worst thing is. Um, for, you know, the suffering and hardship of the world to cause you to fall away from faith. Mm. So he, he writes it with that perspective. And we've got a couple of others that fit in that vein as well. Yes, so uh, Paul Grimman's book, Suffering Well, we actually interview him as part of the conference. Yep, so um, we won't give away anything yeah. about that. No secrets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we have our teen pick this year is also yep. um, Why Does God Let Bad Things Happen, um, which is it's kind of aimed down the lower end of the – the teen market, even a more of a tween book. Yeah, sort of um, nine to thirteen, I think is the yeah. right age group. Yep. Um, although my fourteen-year-old daughter read it, and so did really I. <laughs> I read it as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Believe it um, or not, I'm not a teenager. So. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, well, it answers all the questions, doesn't it? Does. it? I remember it, it showed me the content. The, yeah, yeah. So it's um, you know why is there suffering in the world? Um, where is God when I suffer? If God can stop all the pain, why doesn't He? Um, mm. And then. Uh, so it kind of covers all those questions at that level um, and the questions kids have, I think, yeah. So I think it's good to be proactive in talking to kids about this kind of thing, um, preparing them um, and I guess giving them answers to these things even before they ask them necessarily. Mm. Yeah, that's what I really appreciated because it, it really is geared at that, you know, once they're through the picture books and onto chapter books, mm. that's, that's parent language chapter books but um <laughs> they, they they could read that yes. that book um yeah. and you're so right that kids do have these tough mm. questions um yeah. and they, they need answers mm. we should be able to give them yeah and he just chris morphew all his books i think are just written really well for that age group like he obviously works with, uh, with that age age group and um i found all his books really helpful with our kids for thinking through some big things in a simple way that they can understand yeah yeah and i think you know, there is a book about suffering for teens because it is relevant. Like a few people have asked us, you know, you're doing Lamentations at Equip. Is that just going to be too much for teenagers? Should they really be watching? I think I would encourage parents that um, it is worth um, letting your teen watch. I mean, you know, parental wisdom's w- required. Not all 13-year-olds are the same. But I think they do engage with it and a lot of them, unless they've had a particularly you know, difficult life history already to that age, they they often are able to understand and engage with it and it answers their questions and in a, I guess, in a, in a different way to women. Like I think when women read Lamentations, um, and we've experienced this already, a couple of groups have read it before the conference, there's often tears. 
But I think it's partly because we bring our life experience um, to the text and so the emotions that flow are not just from the Book of Lamentations, they're the way that it resonates with us. It's dragging our memories and Yeah, real, and real so I guess not, you know, that would be true for some teenagers, but a lot of teenagers wouldn't have that backlog of um, emotions that would necessarily be drawn out by the Book of Lamentations. Mm, but like, and like, but like you said before, um, they will experience suffering at some point. I mean, I, I can remember when I was a teenager, and my grandpa died, um, and I had to, you know, work through that. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty pretty common. Kids experience things like that, and it's a great way to initiate a conversation as a parent or a youth group leader, isn't it? Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. That's good. So, uh, why does God help let bad things happen? And oh. Lord, how long? How long, O oh Lord? Going to run the right way. Um, <laughs> sort of deal with that from a, a conceptual standard. Although I believe that Chris Morphy book is is uh, in the situation of the the girl um, was it getting cancer at yes, his school? Yes, a, a girl who died who was part of his school. Um, yeah. So obviously those issues were very very, very personal. To people. Yeah. 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 Um, but then you said there's a, there's another category of way of talking about suffering and dealing with suffering, which is more that experiential side, uh, the grief and the lamenting. Um, and you've got two books here that you picked. Uh, shall we start with Teach Me to Feel? Yeah, sure. so Teach Me to Feel is – that's a beautiful copy of that book. It's hardcover with a ribbon. Mm. Um, I really loved reading it <laughs> in that format. Um, so in it, the author really goes through sa- psalms, lots of different psalms, um, mm-hmm. And I think as women, we can either feel we ought to repress all our emotions, that somehow our emotions are are getting in the way of our judgment and our thinking and we kind of bottle them all up, uh, or else we can kind of give them free reign (laughs) and they can (laughs) uh, derail things. I think, yeah, a lot of women struggle with what we do with our emotions as Christians. Um, And I think she really helpfully in this book uh, kind of has meditations on different psalms and the emotions that might be present in them and helpfully uh, looks at how that it can shape our Christian life, these emotions. And I think particularly with all the emotion that comes up reading a book like Lamentations, it's really helpful to have a resource that does that, um, that helps you, like she says in the title, teaches us to feel mm. in a way that uh, honours the emotions that God has made as part of us and our lives um, without kind of falling into er- either error of ignoring them or making them um, all-powerful and all-consuming. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's... It- it's interesting, and you know, I was I was at a uh, memorial service for a five year old girl who died recently, um, and I ju- the the shortest verse in the Bible just kept running through my head. You know, Jesus, when he goes to see Lazarus who died, he saw the grief around him, and he wept. Mm-hmm. You know, he entered into that emotion with them, um, and yeah, just as you were talking about how we our emotions aren't something to necessarily run away from. They shouldn't control us, but they shouldn't. They're not a bad thing either. Mm. Um, it's so true. Our God is a God who, who um, enters into some things with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you have any any in particular any uh, ways that teach me to feel helped you? Um, so she kind of lists each uh, section. I think there's twenty two of them by the emotion. Mm. Um, so it's one of those books that once you've read the introduction, you could dip in and out of. Um, so at different times, different ones might be what you want to look at. Um, so there was one on weariness in there and I just felt I after the last two years I think we all <laughs> felt right. just a bit weary <laughs> and I think just looking at that and exploring that through Psalms and what we do with that I found particularly helpful um, but she has other things like on envy, on anxiousness, on um, discontent. Um, yeah, so there's just – it's a really great resource because whatever you're feeling, you can read a chapter and, and have a think about it from a Christian perspective and – she gives you a whole lot of psalms that you could read to, to help you through that. Yeah. Can you give me an example of how um, how she helps you to, to not run away with the emotion but not deny it? So, mm. um, um, so, uh, so the weariness one, she looks at Psalm 42 uh, and particularly that sense that um, – you talk to your own soul, like why, you know, are you so downcast with me and my soul? And I just think it's helpful that she takes the emotion but turns it to the question that you ask God but also then you continue to trust God, you know, trusting God yet, you know, so this kind of sense that 
that you experience the emotion, but you take it to the Lord and he's given you the language to do it in the Psalms. Um, yeah, and you, I guess you process it through prayer and through continuing to trust yourself to God through that emotion. Yeah, That yeah. sounds very similar to what, some of what I was seeing in Dark Cloud's Deep Mercy. Yeah, so um, this is another pick that um, we've had. Uh, I guess how would I describe this? It He is talking about um, that whole topic of suffering, living in the fallen world, the judgment of God on sin. So, And in fact, the last, I don't know, five chapters of his book, he actually goes through the book of Lamentations. Um, different to probably what you're going to hear at the conference, it is – a more reflective personal view. So, I mean, I kind of have my book here because the quote that I kind of think represents this book a little bit is, so he's actually quoting someone else, Nicholas Walter Storff, um, and he, he wrote a book called Lament for a Son. But I think these words capture dark clouds. Uh, he says, I shall look at the world through tears. Perhaps I shall see things that dry-eyed I could not see. So I think this journey that he takes you on in Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy, it it is that kind of Ecclesiastes kind of stop in the house of mourning um, and see what you can learn. Yeah, it very helpfully has reflection questions um, at the end of each chapter. So it is a book, I think, um, that you're meant to read slowly uh, and process it uh, as you go. Um, I mean, the beautiful thing is, he just keeps pointing you back to Jesus. So I think um, yeah, he does some psalms, but then yeah, focuses on this book of Lamentations um, and how I guess you know we were talking about the emotions that you feel when you read it. He kind of speaks to that. So he recognizes there's an original situation in which Lamentations was written, but he sort of takes that you know. I think you feel sad because of the actual what happened in mm. Jerusalem, but you also feel sad because your own emotions resonate with it from other experiences. And so he kind of deals a bit more with that side of things. Um, would that be right? Mm. Yeah. He's quite helpful because I think um, sometimes people who are suffering or going through a difficult time um, can turn up to church and feel like there's this disjunct. It all feels a bit happy, a bit fake. Um to them because it seems um, there's not a place for them to sit in that sadness while also still holding on to the hope they have in Jesus. Um, so I think he helpfully talks in it about how as a community of Christians we can get alongside those people and how the Bible gives us the language, I guess, uh, to mm. sit in that, that we're in this place of pain but we have this promise in front of us. Um, so, yeah, he helps helpfully talks about that and um, I guess sometimes... I don't know if it's an Australian thing particularly, we just want to move on and get, look on yep. the bright side and people who are suffering can feel that, that but I'm, I'm sitting in this and this is painful and difficult. Um, so I think he particularly speaks to people who have that experience and feel that uh, and reassures them from the Bible that that's not, um, not in God's plan. Like that is how it's going to be to live this side um, of Jesus returning. Um, yeah, and that there's a language for that in the Bible. Have you ever um, found like had gone through a situation where Christians have come alongside you and suffered with you, or have you been able to s- suffer with others um, at some point? Like it, it, it is a, it is something that comes up. But I'm, I'm yeah. sort of trying to see if if you've I seen think, it in. Yeah, well, I think so. I had a brother die as an adult, and um, I think certainly the people who would just sit with me in the sadness, um, and like the those who weep with those who weep. I mm. think to have someone who will cry, it's not their grief, it, it's their grief over you, uh, you know, what you're going through and your suffering. That's it's a very powerful thing um, to have someone sit with you in that and not hurry you through it, not want you to quickly get over it and get on with things to ease their own discomfort. So um, there's something very loving about someone who's willing to do that and sit with you in that place. Yeah, yeah oh, that's one wonderful to hear in one respect. Um and I, I hope that some people can pick up these these books, teach me to feel, and particularly dark, dark clouds, deep mercy, those two, and um, and learn learn that that skill of suffering with others, and, and understand how to see the world through the, that lens. Yeah. So thank you for sharing, um, and thanks for coming in.
<laughs> Thanks, and, Tom. <laughs> and chatting with me about the, these books. And uh, you've been listening to the Reformers Bookcast with uh, Isabel and Jocelyn from Equip, which you can still register for at yes. equip.org.au. And you'll find the full book list at reformers.com.au forward slash equip. And uh, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next time.